How to make a WireGuard Easy WG-Easy VPN server with web-based admin user interface UI on an Ubuntu Linux virtual private server VPS. The first thing we'll do is create our virtual private server. The VPS host of choice is going to be DigitalOcean for this video demonstration. While our VPS is being set up, we'll then install the WireGuard client on our chosen operating system. We'll then use Putty, which is an SSH client, to log into our DigitalOcean server. After that, we'll go to the WG-Easy GitHub repository and we'll start our by installing Docker. After we've got Docker installed, we'll then need to generate a password hash using Bcrypt's password hash generator. This password hash will be used to log into our WireGuard Easy web-based UI. Once we've generated our password hash, we'll then run WireGuard Easy. This will then automatically install WireGuard Easy. We'll then go to our web-based UI and set up VPN clients for our devices. Finally, we'll check our IP address using whatsmyipaddress.com. Our IPv4 address should match our DigitalOcean server, meaning that we have successfully masked our actual IP address. Okay, so let's start off by creating our virtual private server. First, navigate to the following URL address. This URL address is my referral link to DigitalOcean. It will give you $200 in free DigitalOcean cloud credits to try out their servers free for 60 days. I'll put my referral link in the video description below for your convenience. Once you're on this page, if you don't already have a DigitalOcean account, you'll need to sign up as a new user. You can either sign up by email, GitHub, or your Google account. Now I already have a DigitalOcean account, so I'm simply going to click on sign in. Once you've signed in, you'll be taken to your DigitalOcean projects dashboard. Once you're here, Click on Create, then click on Droplets to create a cloud server. Choose the region for your WireGuard VPN server. So I'm going to be going with Germany in Frankfurt. Scroll down until you see where it says Choose an Image. Make sure OS is selected. If it isn't, just left click on OS. Choose Ubuntu, and then for the version of Ubuntu, click this drop down arrow and choose the latest LTS release. At the time of recording of this video, 24.04 is the latest LTS version. So I'm going to select that. Next, scroll down until you see where it says choose size. Droplet type, choose basic by left clicking on it. Scroll down a bit more until you see where it says CPU options. Go with the regular type. And then depending on the amount of clients that are going to be using your WireGuard VPN, you'll need to choose an appropriate plan. If you're just going to be hosting yourself and all your devices and a few other people like your family or friends, then the $6 a month plan should be more than enough. You get one gigabyte of RAM, one CPU, 25 gigabyte SSD and a terabyte of bandwidth. So I'm going to click on this plan to select it. Scroll down again until you see where it says choose authentication method, click on password and then create a root password for your server. Enter your root password in this text box and make sure your password meets all the password requirements. So I'm just going to enter my password now. Once you've entered your password, scroll down until you see where it says host name. This is just your droplet name or your server name. I'm going to delete the pre-type name in here and I'm going to call my droplet wg-easy-server. Once you've entered in a host name, click on Create Droplet. DigitalOcean will then begin creating your droplet. I'll be back with you once our droplet is up and running. All right, I'm back. And as you can see, there's a green status symbol here, which means our droplet is now active and we've got our droplet's IP address. So now that our server is up and running, we're going to download the WireGuard client. So I'm just going to navigate to this tab here and you're going to open up another tab and navigate to the following URL address, wireguard.com slash install. Once you're here, locate your operating system that you're going to be installing the WireGuard client onto to connect to your WireGuard Easy server. As you can see, you've got Windows here, Mac OS, Android, iOS, and if you scroll down, a whole lot more OSs. I'm on Windows, so I'm going to click on Download Windows Installer. The WireGuard client is a very lightweight client, so it will download really fast. Once it's downloaded, I'm just going to click on my downloads here on my browser to see my recent download history, and I'm going to click on the wireguard-installer.exe. If you're on Windows, you'll be greeted with the user account control, which asks you, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? You have the option to click on no or yes. I'm going to click on yes, as I want to install WireGuard. Once you've done that, WireGuard will begin installing. Once the installation is completed, WireGuard will open automatically. I'm going to minimize WireGuard for the time being, as we'll get back to the client once we have configured the WireGuard Easy server. Next, we're going to install Putty to be able to log into our WireGuard Easy server. Open up another tab and navigate to putty.org. Once you're here, click on Download Putty. Locate your operating system. I'm on Windows, so I'll be installing the 64-bit Windows installer. Now, if Putty isn't available for your operating system, you can just download an alternative 
native SSH client. Now I've already installed Putty, so I'm not going to be going through the installation of Putty again. However, if you want a video that will take you step by step through the process of installing Putty, I'll put a link to one of my videos in the video description below and as a card at the top right hand corner of this video. So once you've got Putty installed, you're going to need to go back to your DigitalOcean dashboard and copy the IP address of your server. As you can see, my server's IP is 134.122.68.166. Just click on copy next to it to copy the IP address to your clipboard. Minimize your browser to be taken to your desktop. Once here, look for the Putty shortcut. If you don't have a Putty shortcut, you'll need to search for it on your PC and then just open it. I've got a Putty shortcut, so I'm just going to double click on it to open it. Once you've got Putty open, just right click underneath the host name or IP address text box and then click on paste to paste in your IP address. Leave everything else as default and click on open. You'll then be greeted with the following Putty security alert, which informs you that the server's host key is not cached in the registry and you have no guarantee that the server is the computer you think it is. Of course, guys, we know this is our DigitalOcean server that we just created. You have the option to cancel, connect once or accept. I'm going to click on accept. I'm going to maximize the Putty terminal window. At the top left, you can see it says login as. We're going to be logging in as root. So type root in here and then hit enter on your keyboard. You'll then need to enter your root password that you created created earlier for your DigitalOcean droplet. So just type it in here and then hit enter on your keyboard. You'll then be logged into your server. Once you're logged in, open up your browser and open up another tab and navigate to the following URL address, github.com slash wg dash easy slash wg dash easy. Once you're here, look for where it says installation and look at step one, which says install Docker. So we're going to copy this command here, but we're going to leave out the word exit. So copy everything from curl to where it says, who am I bracket, and then right click on it and click on copy. We're going to leave out the word exit because that will close and exit out of the putty command line terminal. Open back up putty and right click to paste. Hit enter on your keyboard. Docker will then begin installing on your server. I'll be back with you once Docker has been installed. All right, I'm back. Docker is now installed. Open up your browser once again, and then look to where it says step two. We're not going to run WireGuard easy just yet. We're going to in fact create a password hash using Bcrypt's password hash generator. So you can just right click on this hyperlink text and then click on open link in a new tab. Now I've already opened it in a new tab, so I'm just going to click on the tab here to be taken to the how to generate a Bcrypt hash. You're going to look to where where it says usage with Docker. Copy this command by clicking on the copy icon to copy it to your clipboard. Minimize your browser and minimize putty if necessary and double click to open up a text editor. I'm going to open up notepad, right click and paste in the bcrypt password hash generator. Maximize your text editor for better viewing. We're going to edit this command. Where you see your password and on the second line, literally your password, we're going to delete both of these and we're going to enter our own password in here. This password will be used to log into the WireGuard Easy web-based UI. So I'm just going to click on the first line here and I'm going to delete your underscore password. Enter your own password in here. So my password is going to be secret123. And then on the second line where it says literally your underscore password, click here and delete it. And then enter your password once again. So mine is going to be secret123. Highlight this command, right click on it and then click on copy to copy it to your clipboard. Open back up putty right click to paste this command into your command line terminal and then hit enter on your keyboard and bcrypt will then generate your password hash. Okay, so our password hash has been generated where you see password underscore hash and then your password hash is in quotations here. So I'm just going to highlight this entire line from where it says password hash to the end of the quotation here. This will automatically copy it to the clipboard, open up your notepad once again, open up another tab in your notepad or text editor, right click and click on paste. So we've got our password hash now. Open back up your browser and go back to your other tab, which is the github.com slash wg dash easy slash wg dash easy. Scroll up a bit until you see step two, which says run WireGuard easy. Copy this entire command to your clipboard, open back up your text editor and then open up another tab, right click and paste in the command. We'll now need to edit a few things. First, let's edit the language of our WireGuard Easy Web UI. So where you see dash dash env lang equals de, this basically means that the language is currently set to German. So delete the two letters de and then if you want English, just simply type en. Next is wg underscore host. You can see it says your server IP. So we're going to grab our server IP by opening up our browser once again, Navigate into the DigitalOcean dashboard and click in on copy to copy our server's IP address. Open back up the text editor and then delete everything from the forward arrow, your server IP to the back arrow. Once you've done that, right click 
and paste in your server's IP address. Next will be our password hash. So we're going to go back to the password hash that we generated using bcrypt and we're going to highlight it all, right click on it and we're going to click on copy. We're going to go back to the WireGuard easy command. We're going to look to where it says password hash, your admin password hash. We're going to delete everything from the quotation mark to the end to where it says password hash. Once you've done that, right click and then click on paste to paste in the password hash you generated with bcrypt. Once you've done all of that, highlight the entire command, right click on it and click on copy to copy it to your clipboard. Open up putty once again and right click to paste. Hit enter on your keyboard. Once you've done that, WireGuard Easy will be installed and running. We don't need our putty command line terminal anymore, so I'm just going to click on the X to X out of it and then I'm going to click on OK. Go back to the WireGuard Easy repository and then look for where it says the web UI will now be available on HTTP colon slash slash your server's IP address colon 51821. So what we're going to do, we're just going to copy this link here by highlighting it, right click on it and click on copy. Again, open up your text editor, click on the plus symbol to create another tab, right click and click on paste. Let's grab our IP address again from the DigitalOcean dashboard by clicking on copy and then open up your text editor once again. Delete 0, .0, .0. right click and click on paste. Once you've done that, highlight the link, right click, click on copy, open back up your browser, open up another tab and paste in the URL address. Hit enter on your keyboard to navigate to that URL address. A web page will open, taking you to your server's WireGuard Easy web UI. If you see this page, it means you have successfully set up WireGuard Easy. Now you'll need to log in by entering in your password. This is not your password hash, but the password itself, which in my case is secret123. So I'm just going to type secret one, two, three, and I'm going to click on sign in. Once you've signed into WireGuard Easy, you'll be taken to the admin user interface. So as you can see, it says there are no clients yet. Let's create our first client for one of our devices. So click on plus new client, choose a name. So I'm going to call it client one dash PC, and then I'm going to click on create. So there we go, we've created our first client. Now, if you want to create another client, just simply click on plus new and then give it a name. So I'm going to call it client two dash phone. So this is my second device, and then I'm going to click on create. So we've got two clients now, one for our PC and one for our phone. You might be wondering why I have created two clients. For every device or every user, you'll need to create a separate client unique to them. This is because each client can only be used on one device. If you try to use the same client configuration on multiple devices, it will not work. You need to create a new client for every single device and every single user. Great, so you've created your clients. If you're trying to connect to WireGuard Easy using a mobile WireGuard client, anything with the camera, then you'll simply click on the QR code icon here to show the QR code. You can then just simply scan the QR code to add your VPN's tunnel to your client. If you're on a PC like myself, you'll need to download the configuration file or .conf file. To do this, you'll need to click on the download icon here to download the configuration. Once you've done that, the .conf file will be in your downloads. You might need to click on keep if it says insecure download blocked by your browser. So I'm just going to click on keep here. I'm then going to click on the show in folder button to see my downloaded .conf file. Once you've got your client configuration file downloaded, in my case, it's client1-pc, we can now use this to connect to our WireGuard VPN server. Open up your WireGuard client that you installed earlier, and then you can either click on import tunnel from file or add tunnel. I'm just going to click on add tunnel here, find your .conf file. Mine's in my downloads, so I'm going to click on downloads. And as you can see, client1-pc.conf, I'm just going to click on it and I'm going to click on open. It will then be added to your WireGuard client. To connect to your WireGuard Easy VPN server, just click on activate. And there we go, your VPN is now working. If you want to check if everything's working correctly, just open up your browser. And then if you look at client1-pc, you can see a red status symbol, which means there's a connection ongoing. And you can see the time here. You can then see the download speed and the upload speed of that client. The toggles here are to turn off the WireGuard VPN connection for that client. So as the admin, you can toggle off and toggle on client connections as you see fit. Now to check if our IP address is indeed masked and our IP address is protected, open up another tab in your browser and navigate to whatismyipaddress.com. Hit enter on your keyboard. In the IPv4 address section, you should see your DigitalOcean's IP address, which in my case is 134.122.68.166. And if we go to our DigitalOcean dashboard, you can see that the IP address does indeed match the IP address displayed at whatismyipaddress.com. This means our actual IP address is masked and that our WireGuard VPN server's IP address is displayed instead, which means our VPN is working correctly. So before I end the video, I just want to talk about a few more features of the WireGuard Easy Admin UI. So I'm just going to go back to the WireGuard Admin UI here, and I'm going to quickly give you a brief rundown of the restore and backup buttons here. So the backup button will back up all your configuration 
configurations. So any of the clients that you've added in the admin web UI, in my case, I've got two clients. And if I want to back up these client configurations, I would need to simply click on backup and then a .json file will then be downloaded. This .json file can then be used to restore all the clients if somehow your server crashed and was deleted or if you've clicked on delete client accidentally or deliberately and you want to restore it. So let me show you an example. So first, let me just disconnect from WireGuard. So I'm going to click on deactivate here and now my VPN is no longer on. Now I'm going to delete both of these clients by clicking on the trash icon here to delete the client. The WireGuard Easy Web UI will then ask you, are you sure you want to delete this client? This action cannot be undone. So I'm going to click on delete and then I'm going to do the same for client two as I did for client one. And now we have a blank WireGuard Easy Admin UI. So instead of going through the process of creating new clients, I'm just simply going to click on restore. I'm going to find the .json file, which contains all the backup configurations for all our clients. So I'm going to click on this JSON file, which is called wg0.json, and then I'm going to click on open, and then you'll get a message from the WireGuard Easy Admin panel, which says the configuration was updated. I'm just going to click on OK. And then as you can see, both my clients have then been restored and added back to the WireGuard Easy Admin UI. And because I didn't delete the tunnel from my WireGuard client, I can just simply open back up my WireGuard client, click on activate to start using my WireGuard VPN once again. And as you can see, if we look at client one dash PC, you can see we're already connected to our WireGuard server, which means we are protected by our VPN. And lastly, I did talk about the toggles, but if you wanted to stop a client from using your WireGuard VPN, you can just simply click on this red toggle to disable the client. It should go gray. So now client 2 dash phone cannot use my WireGuard VPN. Even though they have added the WireGuard configuration file, they'll have no connection when they activate WireGuard on their client. All right, so that pretty much concludes the video on how to make a WireGuard Easy WG dash Easy VPN server with web-based admin UI on an Ubuntu Linux VPS. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, comment down below, and most importantly of all, subscribe to support the channel. I'll see you on the next video. Is it so hard to let you go?